Hi and welcome to the second video in the coding in C Sharp tutorial series. Uh, in this video we're going to look at variables, constants and types. So uh, in the previous tutorial we had some code which would display a message to the uh, user in the console and then we just wait for the user to press a key on the keyboard before quitting the program. So we have console.writeline and console.readline. Um, now here we're displaying a piece of information, which is just a message, it's just text. Um, but programs that are a bit more useful if we can actually store information, um, so maybe store information that we get from the user, and then use that information or data in some way. So what we'll do firstly is look at variables, and variables are basically like a container that hold or store um, some data. And the data that variables can store have a specific type and the type determines the kind of data the variable can hold and the way it works with that data and how it treats it. Um, so whether it's numbers or whether it's text or whether it's something else completely different. Now variables can be given an initial value when they're created and the thing about variables is that um, the value that it's a, a variable stores can be used later on in the program, elsewhere in the program, but it can also be changed or modified. So variables values can be changed throughout the program. Uh, whereas constants, constants are a little bit like variables, so they store data of different types, but constants, once they are given a value, that value can't be changed at any other point in the program. It's stuck with that value, um, can't be modified, and that value stays constant throughout the program. So it's quite useful if um, you want to store a piece of data and you don't want it to accidentally get changed or modified at any other point in the program. Okay, so um, there are a few different types that we can work with when we store data in variables. If we're storing text, then we use the string type. So if we're just storing letters and numbers um, or different characters and spaces and things like that, we just want to treat it as text then we work with the string type, okay? Um, when we're working with numbers, we can either work with whole numbers, which are integers, or the int type. If we're working with numbers that contain a decimal place, um, then we can work with float, or um, we can also work um, with double, the double type. And when we're working with um, values that are either true or false, we can work with the bool, um, boolean or bool type as well. And there are different types of integers as well as int 16 and int 32 for different size numbers. Um, but we're just going to look at a few of them in this video and work with others um, later on in the series. So the first one we'll work with is string. So here we have a console.writeline statement which displays a string of text. So this text can contain letters and um, spaces and it can contain different characters or symbols like a hashtag or the um, the uh, exclamation mark, and it could contain numbers as well, but we're not, uh, we're just treating this as text to display on the screen. Um, we're not, if we put numbers in here, we're not treating them in any other way, like we're not going to multiply or add the numbers together or anything, it's just text. Okay, so that is the string type. And so if we want to create a variable, the first thing that we need to do is say what type it is, what type of data it's going to store. Um, so we'll do that now, we'll just make some space inside this main method and we'll say the first variable that we create, we want it to be of the string type. So we type in string and then each variable that we create must have a name and that name needs to be unique. So we can't have multiple variables sharing the same name. We can't use certain keywords that already exist in language. So for example, string is a keyword to describe the type of a variable we can't then go and call this variable string. Okay, there's other keywords as well in the language like uh, if, or while, or for, different keywords that we're going to use later for different um, functions. And so we can't use those keywords. They already exist to do some, something else in the language. So variables must have their own unique names that don't already exist. And variables start with a lowercase um, letter, so you can't start with an uppercase letter. And they can't contain spaces. So for example, if I create a string variable that's going to contain a message, I could call it message, 
in lowercase or I could call it my message and instead of using spaces I could use uppercase letters for the start of each new word after the first word. So here for example I can say I'm creating a variable which is of the, of the string type I'm going to call it my message and then what I do is use an assignment operator or the equal sign to assign a value to this variable. Now actually what I could do is just end this line with a, a semicolon and create the variable and assign a value to it later. So I could say something like create this variable that is of the string type and has the name my message and on the next line I could say my message equals hello there C sharp programmer in quotes so strings go inside uh, double quotes and so what I'm doing here is on two lines I'm firstly I'm creating the variable of the string type giving it the name my message and then I'm assigning this value here this message to that variable using uh, by calling the variables name and using the assignment operator okay so just remember that when you um, give a value to a string it's always in double quotes and the reason why this is underlined yellow here, it's not because it's an error, it's just because we've created this variable here, we've given it a value, but we haven't actually used this variable yet. So it's saying if we mouse over, it says the variable my message is assigned, but its value is never used, which just means that we don't go and use it anywhere else in the program, we don't display it um, on the screen or um, change the value again or use it in some other part of the program. So that's just a little warning. Okay, so we're creating a variable here, we're initializing, uh, sorry, we're declaring this variable, declaring its type, and then we're initializing this variable, we're giving it an initial value. We can actually do this all in one line though. If we want to give the value to the variable at the same time, what we can do is just say string, uh, so it's type, give it its name, my message, use the assignment operator, and then give it its initial value, and then that line with a semicolon. We can do all of that in one line. Now we can go ahead and use this variable. So in our console.writeline statement down here, we're actually displaying the same message that we're storing in this variable up here. So instead of displaying this message here, what we can do is just put the variable's name in there, in those brackets, my message, and it will get the value from that variable and display it. So now what we could do is just save this, run the application, and in the console it says, hey there C sharp programmer. Um, so it's getting the value from that variable and displaying it here in this right line statement. Okay, now we can have a, a look at um, what we can do if we want to change this variable. So we might make a bit of space after that statement. And what we can do now is we've already created this variable, we've given it a value, but now we might want to change its value. So we might just want to say something like, um, hello. Okay, so all we need to do is just say the variable's name, use the assignment operator, and then put in there whatever we want to say. Now, we don't actually have to say string again because this variable already knows its type. It doesn't need to, we don't need to say string again here at the start. So now what we could do is we could copy this line here and paste it down here. And so what we'll be doing is we're creating the my message variable, giving it the value there, showing that value on the screen, changing its value to something else, and then showing that new value on the screen on a new line. So let's go and run that. And there we go, we've got hello there C sharp programmer. The value changes to hello for the variable and it's displayed on the screen again. So that's, um, Pretty easy. All right, let's look at some other types of variables. So let's work with numbers now. So we'll get rid of this here. And what we'll do is first we'll work with whole numbers. And whole numbers or integers are referred to as the int type in C sharp. And there's different types of int as well. There's int 16 and int 32, which we'll look at later um, and basically used for storing um, values of different sizes. But We'll just work with int now, which stands for integer, and we'll say something like, we'll call it my number, and we use the assignment operator, so we're saying it's the int type, the variable is called my number, and we're going to assign a, a value to it, 
and let's just say the value is 5, okay? And that line with a semicolon. Now, if it's an integer, it has to be a whole number, so we can't type in something like 5.2. Um, we'll get a red underline here. If we mouse over, it says cannot implicitly convert type double to int. So we're trying to con trying to uh, use a, a number with a decimal place here um, and put it in a variable that's only working with whole numbers or integers. So let's change that back to a whole number. And what we can do is grab this console.writeLine statement, paste it down here, and change it to display the my number variable. What a new line. And let's see that. So there we go, hello there, C sharp programmer and five. Okay, so that's int, used for whole numbers. We've also got a float, a float type, so we can create a variable called my float, and this is used for uh, numbers with decimal places. So we could say, Something like 25.384, okay? When we um, assign a float value to a variable of the float type, what we need to actually do at the end of that number is put in an F to indicate that it's a float. And then we can end that line with a semicolon. So float numbers always end with an F in C sharp. And we can say line my float and display that on a new line as well as output. There we go. All right, um, close that. All right, the next type that we'll look at is double. Okay, and the double type is also used for numbers with um, uh, that contain a decimal place. All right, the difference is um, that the double type is double precision. So um, float is single precision, double is double precision. And it's actually uh, 64 bit. Uh, so single precision uh, or float type, it has uh, 32 bits available, whereas double uses 64 bits to represent a number. So we can work with large numbers or um, numbers with more digits. This is double precision. Okay, so if we wanted to have more numbers after the decimal place, um, we can work with double. We'll actually look at that a little bit more later on in this series. So we'll look at all the different types of uh, integers and floats and doubles and um, uh, 16, 32-bit, 64-bit. We'll look at the differences there and exactly how many um, digits we can work with, um, as well as things like signed and unsigned integers. But let's just create a basic variable here called my double equals, and we'll give this a different value. And with double, you don't need to end it with um, an F to indicate that it's a, a double type variable. We don't need an F there. All right, let's display this on the screen. Let's output the value there. And there we, go. there we go, that's our four variables so far. One last type that we'll look at for this tutorial is the Boolean type, um, or bool, as it's known in C sharp, which is bool. And um, basically, the bool type is when you've got a value that's either true or false. So it only stores values either true or false. Okay, so we can say bool, my bool equals true. Or we could say bool my bool equals false. Okay, so um, that can be used for if we want to um, check if a condition is true or false and store the result in a variable. So um, lots of different conditions we'll work with. And we'll look at conditional programming later on uh, in this series. Um, what we'll do now though, just to finish off this, is look at constants. So we've created a few different variables here. We've got my message, which is of the string type, my number, which is of the int type, my float, which is of the float type, my double, which is of the double type, and my bool, which is of the bool type. Now these variables, we can go and change their, their values later on in the program. We can say something like um, my bool equals true. So we can go and change its value from false to true. But um, 
If we want to store data somewhere and we don't want it to be changed either accidentally or intentionally, then what we can do is make that variable a constant instead. So let's try that out with this string up here. We can do it with the string or integer or float or whatever, but all we need to do is basically type const before we before we specify the type of variable. So const and then a space. So now what we can do is we can try and change the, the value of this my message variable and just change it to something else like hey and you'll notice that my message is now underlined in red. If we mouse over it says the left hand side of an assignment must be a variable property or indexer. So on the left side of this assignment here We've got a variables name, uh, sorry, a constant's name, not a variables name. So we can't, it's, it's already not going to let us change the value of this constant um, because its value is always going to be kept the same. So if we try and run it, we're going to get that error there and won't actually build the application run. So we can fix that by making it a variable instead of a constant and now we can go and change its uh, value. Okay, but constants are quite useful if there's any case in a program where you want a variable to stay the same throughout and not get changed at all. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorials we're going, or next tutorial we're going to look at operators. Thanks for watching.